In this video, I'll be covering tree maps and how you can plot them in Python using Plotly Express. Before I dive in, let me talk to you about the environment I'm using and the dependencies. I'm using Jupyter Notebooks via the Anaconda Individual Edition. This comes with many useful data analysis libraries such as Pandas. It doesn't come with Plotly pre-installed, so I've had to install that via the command pip install plotly. If you're unfamiliar with pandas and are completely new to data visualization in Python, then this video won't make much sense to you. So I do recommend you cover the basics first. I have a course on Python for data analysis and visualization, which can help you get started. I'll provide links with more information on this, including installation of the dependencies in the description of this video. Okay, so let's talk about tree maps. This is a data visualization technique that can display hierarchical data using nested rectangles. The size of the rectangles are controlled by a variable that you assign. So we have this example table, which contains information about two departments in a company and employees in that company. You can also see the salary for each employee. We can use this data to create a tree map. The outer rectangles in this illustration are the departments. The nested rectangles represent employees in the department, and the size of the rectangle is proportionate to the employee's salary. You can also color each rectangle based on different groupings or values. Tree maps can be great at summarizing large amounts of hierarchical data in a limited amount of space. It's great for showing patterns that would otherwise be difficult to spot. There are limitations to tree maps though. Negative values can't be displayed on tree maps. Tree maps are also not as useful when there's a large difference in the measure of values. Okay, so with that being said, let's move over to my notebook. I've imported the relevant libraries, Plotly Express as PX and Pandas as PD. I'm using the sample dataset that's built in to Plotly. It's from Gapminder, and it contains information for countries across multiple years, information such as the population, life expectancy, and so on. I filtered this sample dataset to include only data for the year 2007. I've stored the data as a data frame called DF. You can see the first five records here to get an idea of what the data looks like. So there's a hierarchy, you have a column called continent, and a column called country. Each country belongs to a continent. And I'll be using this dataset to plot the tree maps. So the syntax for a tree map is to type plotly.express.treemap, and inside the parenthesis, you have a number of arguments you can provide. This is the official syntax, and I'll also link this with the description. So you need to include the data frame as the first argument. You can then also provide many other optional arguments that determine how your plot looks. So I'll move over to my notebook again. I want to plot a tree map that contains information for each country and I want to size each rectangle based on that country's population. So I can type px, I don't need to type plotly.express because remember we've imported plotly.express as px. So I can type px.treemap. And I can type for the data frame argument, df, which is this data frame. And then I can use the path argument. The path argument takes a column or a list of columns and defines the hierarchy. Because I only want to plot countries, I can just pass in country. And it's passed inside of square brackets. I want to size each rectangle based on the population. So I use the values argument and I type Then I can press Ctrl and Enter. So here is our tree map. So as you can see, each country is assigned a rectangle. The size is proportionate to the population. And if I hover over any of the rectangles, you can see additional information. OK, so now let me go from the hierarchy of continent to country. So in the path argument, I'll add in continent. So you can now see the hierarchy. Each continent is its own rectangle, and each country belonging to that continent 
is a nested rectangle. The path goes from continent to country. The chart is also interactive. So if I click on a continent, it will filter the chart for that continent only. So let me select Americas. Now, as you can see, we filtered to only include Americas. And again, I can select Brazil. And now we have information just for Brazil. To go up the levels, I can click here to go back to the continent level of Americas. And then I can click here to go back to the top level. If I swap the values in the path argument to go from country to continent, so if I change this to country and this to continent, it will also work. But this doesn't really add any value. So you should go from a higher to a lower level of granularity. So I'll just change this back. You can also modify how the rectangles are colored using the color argument. If I color based on the pop field by using the color argument and typing pop, we can see that we now have a legend. The yellow color represents the highest population, and then down to the dark purpley blue color represents the lowest population. And if you don't like this color scale, you can also specify a number of different scales in the color underscore continuous underscore scale argument. There are a number of options to choose from, and I'll link this in the description. Okay, so let me enter in color underscore continuous underscore scale equals ORRD. So now it's a bit easier to differentiate. Let me change it to RDDU. And again, now we have dark blue as the highest population and dark red as the lowest population. So let's say you wanted to color the rectangles based on life expectancy instead of the population. Well, you can just change the color argument to life expectancy, like this. And now the rectangles are sized based on the population and the color scale is assigned based on the life expectancy. The top rectangle here is in a dark grayish color. You can actually assign it a name by using a constant for the top level hierarchy. So you can use the constant method on Plotly Express and add it to the top of the hierarchy by making it the first element in the path list as follows px.constant and then in brackets you just type the name of the constant. I'll just type world, pass in a comma, command and enter. So now the top level is world, which makes a bit more sense. Okay. So that was an introduction to tree maps using Plotly Express. They're really good at making things stand out and spotting interesting trends. There's a lot more customization you can do with tree maps to get it to look and feel exactly as you want. For more information, follow the links in the description. This notebook that I've been working on will also be available on my GitHub, and I'll also link that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a like and subscribe for more content.